Hey guys, welcome back. This is the Little Fear Fear here, and today is the end of the three restoration extravaganza, where I've just been putting out a lot of restorations lately, and we are ending with this Union Pacific Pacific. And so I believe the last time I ran this locomotive, it still worked, but I knew it needed some work. So let's just test how it's running right now, moving forward. A little bit of a creep in. There you go, just a little antsy to start up. I'm gonna back it up here. And the headlight is working up front. You can see there. All right, now let's take this over to the workbench and open this engine up. So starting off, we're gonna separate the locomotive and the tender. And one of the main issues with this locomotive is that its wheels are Pretty dirty under there, so I'm just gonna first have to unscrew the drawbar. Make this driver's the right size. We'll clean the tender wheels and look at that a little bit later. We'll also look at the drawbar later because it's a little funky right now. All right. Set that off to the side. I'm also gonna send the tender off to the side. Now looking at the drawbar here. See the previous owner. So the original drawbar broke, and the previous owner, instead of taking off the original drawbar, put another drawbar on. And so that's interesting. So I'm gonna unscrew that because we're gonna work on that later. Or at least try to separate the two drawbars because. That drawbar is long enough, even if I just take off this little extension piece, so it should fit on my layout still. And now let's try to open up this Mantua engine. It's my first time with a like, Mantua steam engine. Take off the trailing wheels. And the spring to go with that. It's stuck to me. All right. Take off the leading wheels because those are hiding the screw to take off the body. Spacer, that and spring. Make sure to keep all those parts together so I don't lose them. All right. I believe it is the, these two screws and this front screw that are holding on the chassis. Let's start with the back too, because I think that actually only holds on the pilot. Scratch it up. Okay, I guess. To take off. Yeah, I'm gonna take off this front screw. I think this also just takes off the front pilot. At least it's loose now. Still being oh there okay. on. Cylinders are connected to the body. Just where I want. Would be the next step to take this off. I can fix the I'll put it back together in that the pilot. So, how do I disconnect the cylinders? Oh, 
there you go, at the front, you can see where it reads Mantua. But I'm going to cut so I can get a better look at how to take off and try to get better access to the motor. So I'll show you guys how to do that once I find out how to. All right, I'm back. So the step I had to do was I had to pull out the pistons and cylinders apart from each other. And I just put the handrail back in onto the pilot so it's tricky starting to go. It fell apart, but I can fix that later. All right, let's see how to disconnect the motor. Or, actually, the first I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the commutator because that, see inside there, I'm trying to get some light reflecting in. It's fairly dirty. And so, this is very similar to the Varney engine and its restoration. I should see, I should just fall right out. Just have to move the little pin. Actually, let me angle a little bit. There we go. All right. Oh, there we go. So one or more of the other brush spots. Let's keep those so we're on the side. We have a very dirty commutator. This is a five pole motor. It spins pretty freely in its spot, so that's not bad. But we'll start to scrub down on the commutator. Try to be, oops, sorry. Be careful with the rods and everything. Another key thing to do once you're done cleaning just the tops of the commutator is to take like a toothpick or something that's softer than metal and taking that to clean the gaps in the commutator because those can also start fires or burn out your motor. They can also wear down your brushes so you're not picking up power as well as you used to be. Commutator is pretty black to begin with, but there's a slight brass undercolor. It's starting to see now. Some of the colors don't come across as well as on camera as they do in person. You also have to make sure when you're using Q tips or cotton buds not to get any follicles stuck in the motor or on the coils. Okay, looking. Notice will be better. All right now, commutator is cleaned up better. And so I'm gonna take the dirty Q-tips off to the side. And we're gonna look at our wheels here, how dirty they are. They don't actually come across to be that terribly dirty. Let's take a look at the tender wheels for a second. The tender wheels are a little bit dirtier than the other wheels, but with the tag that I got when I bought this engine, it said that the wheels were dirty and they need to be cleaned, but I, don't think they're too terribly bad. Yeah, everything's been pretty smoothly. And so I'm still just going to take the track bright or Pico. Yeah, I think it's called a track bright. And these are normally used for like cleaning rails. So you can see for when I've cleaned my rails. There. And so. So only these three wheels pick up power because the tender picks up power from this rail, from that rail. So these ones do not pick up power, but these ones do. Try 
just gonna do the best I can. It's a pretty simple process to cleaning the wheels. It just gets a little repetitive. You just kind of scrub away at them and then if you want to find a new area, put the cylinder out of the way. You just kind of you can spin the motor to into a new rotation, then you scrub that area, scrub that area, and you continue until your wheels are looking noticeably cleaner. And so since this is a simple process, I'm gonna just like cut it out or, yeah, cut. So I'll skip ahead to when the wheels are all nice and cleaner. All right, now I clean, or I finished the process of cleaning up these wheels. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take Q-tip here, and you can see the grease that's been built up from there. What you do, Q-tip, scratch off that old grease, gunk in there. Yeah, it's pretty nasty. Use a screwdriver to try to get out of that area. Comes off really flaky because it's pretty old and unused. Wipe down the worm gear. Get that all clean. Put some grease on the worm gear. Now I'm gonna crack open the underside of here. Grease and toothpick. And if you just put it on top here, you, you can spin it around with your hand and then you can get it spread onto the other gear. There. That should be plenty of grease. For the mechanism now. And eventually, yeah, it'll balance out. Okay. Now, actually, before I do that, I'm going to pop on the body and try to get the cylinders realigned. All of that stuff, this is gonna be fun. Is this wire going to This wire go in. I'm just... First of all, before I move on to anything, I wanna figure out if this wire is electrically necessary or you know, pick up power. So I'm gonna go check that really quick. All right, I am back now from testing it. And no, that wire is not needed for power. I did also have to put the brushes in off camera, but they're not that hard. You just stick them up and back in and pull the little pin back, get them in place. Now I'm going to try to I don't know what this part goes to, but now I'm gonna to try to fit the cylinders back on the engine. All right, I am gonna do this off camera so I can get a better view of it or a angle to approach. The camera is a little bit in my way. All right, now, 
I got all the linkage in properly and I had to use tweezers for some of the parts because the holes were really tiny. And so when you're doing this, you just have to make sure to take your time and not to break anything and be careful. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is screw in the body. So the underside screws and get the pilot back on properly. So the two rear screws. The nice thing about this model is that if you saw earlier, these cylinders have a nice area that they lock into. Once you get everything in, it stays in. Make sure everything's tight. And now onto the pilot. Plug in the handrail to the hole. Yeah. There's this tiny front screw. There we go. Everything, the body's not screwed on, so now we're gonna open the base keeper plate, or this plate down here, and look at what's going on inside of there. The surprising thing is a lot of these screws look pretty clean and new for the bottom here, so I don't know if these are all original, unlike this dirtier, more blackened screw. I think those are, yep, the screws on this plate. I'm going to take a Q-tip and wipe off all the old oil, and then add some new Bell 102 to it. Well, it's just pretty black and nasty, so yeah. It's gonna be nice with some new fresh oil in it. Right. Be nice and clean now. And so we got some light oil to the axle. There we go. Then before we oil all the rods, try to clean those up a little bit. Get another Q-tip or paper towel maybe even. All right now, I'm gonna grab some more Q-tips since I ran out, and I'm gonna wipe down the rods before I oil them up. All right, I am back, and so I'm just gonna wipe down the rods, any excess oil, any old oil, or to put to brush oil on.
I could fix that later, but I didn't get this piece fully clicked in, so I can do that later. Alrighty, now I'm gonna go fix that piece and then we can oil this up. All right, now I fixed the part and now it's back in, so now we can lubricate all of the different points. And it's important to get all of the different little hinges on the valve gear or just the regular drive rod on these steam locomotives. Other side. And we can oil up and put on the leading and trailing wheels. All right. Now, since they're all done, we can oil these up a little bit. Right, all that up. So I have this screw, this spring, through. I think this goes on the other way. One side is slightly longer than the other. And so it goes short end is closest to the driving wheels. It's actually a nice feature on this older engine to have the sprung leading wheels. It's a little tight inside there, but sprung. Rear wheels here. Else it's screwing. This one's just need a little bit of oil. Put the inside and the outside. And there you go. They're pretty quiet, which is nice. Bring the keys in here. And so let's put this upside down. There we go. Spring is still in there. Nice and sprung. And that's all tightened. All right, that should be the engine all cleaned up. And now I'm going to go on a tangent here and now look at the drawbar, see what's going on here. It seems to me made of some sort of cardboard or something almost. And there. Cracked it off fairly simply. Got that little extender piece. It is gone now. And bore out the hole a bit larger. There we go. So this, yeah, there we go. And if this is a problem in the end, what I can do is I can just glue this piece back on. But for now, we have shorter drawbar and also the excess and glue or the excess dry glue cap on the level 102 
And now we can move on over to the tender. And so what we're doing for the tender right now is we're gonna take these off, these screws out and clean the wheels. Assuming it's the same size as all the other screws. can take these out. I might just have to clean them with them still being in their bogey. This one's tight in there. Wow. It's really tight in there. Well, also, I'll also, while I'm at it, I'm gonna see if I can do something with this coupler box here. It seems like the coupler is literally just glued right in. But maybe rolling off the table. Okay. All right, I'll get back to you once I get this off or if I can't get it off. All right, now in the end, I could not actually get this truck off, so I just cleaned the wheels with the track right on the table here. And so it's a pretty simple process of just like the other wheels, and you just scrape off the oxidization. And so I'll skip ahead once this is all completed. All right, now the wheels are all nice and shiny and not as dull as they used to be and so let's screw them back in and we can get the tender and the locomotive screwed together then we can test the results of the restoration Before then, going to oil all of the axles on the tender. bar in between the two. Just a second. I would do this off camera so I can get some better balance so the camera's not in the way. All right, now we got tender hooked up, everything ready. And in the meantime, I also did hook up that wire that I didn't know what it went to. That wire actually goes to the light and it connects onto the motor on the inside. So we should have a light. There you go. And you can see the engine is running and it's running at some lower voltages than it was earlier. And so let's just see how slow it can go. That's about the slowest speed it hits before just yeah, stalling out, because that's what it will do. But now we can go and hook up this engine to some rolling stuff. There is also, I guess I didn't notice say anything about this earlier, but there is actually somebody spilled some red paint on the plow. You actually can't see it unless you get oh yeah, close there you go. 
section. It's just very small up in there. But anyway, let's get this engine hooked up to some rolling stock. All right, now we're gonna back up the Union Pacific engine into a train here, and this consist is consisting of Burlington Northern cars and Union Pacific cars. And I think it's a couple, so it is. A couple in one place, one couple in another. Just find the box right here. All right, All right, now let's try to see if we can park the engine in shot here. It's coming in, and there. <laughs> yeah, this engine doesn't have any flywheels or anything on the inside, so it does stop pretty quick. And, well, this just about sums up this restoration video. It's nice to get this engine running a lot nicer and a little bit looking a little bit nicer, getting some of the grease and oil off of the running gear and such. And also with the closer coupling, since I just took out that little extender piece. But I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this. And if you're watching all the way to the end, thank you again. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.